All right, so the uh, next C of the five C's of survival is cover. And I've done these out of order, so to speak. Um, I would think that uh, cover is number one, one of the most important. Um, I, under the sacred order, is a shelter, uh, fire, water, and uh, at least for three, most people go shelter, fire, water, food. Um, but um, I, I'm pretty much taught to go by shelter, fire, and water. And uh, shelter being first, uh, depending on the situation. But most often, you got to get out of the elements, whether it's too hot or too cold, uh, etc. You know, to regulate your internal body temperature to make sure that you don't uh, go hyper or hypothermic. And so shelter is, is fundamental uh, for humans. Uh, most animals have tough hides, thick hides, fur to protect them. Uh, so that being said, um, we uh, basically are hairless and we run around. Uh, if it's too hot, then we get, can get uh, overwhelmed with the heat uh, or sun scorched. If it's too cold, we can get frostbite or uh, to get, end, up, get, in, end up with a hypothermia where our core temperature drops and we freeze to death. So it tends to be uh, the first. So there's an equa there, there, there is a relevant uh, 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 equations that I'm going back and forth with. And so uh, cover is gonna be first in the five C's, which would be synonymous with shelter. And so again, I'm going to try and cover um, just kind of what I have uh, as it relates to uh, modern and uh, primitive uh, uh, tools and technology for covering. Uh, so first off, I'm going to cover the primitive aspect. And one of the primitive aspects is just this blanket or even woven fabric. Uh, you know, if, if, if you can build a loom out of, you know, from scratch and you know how to harvest uh, materials, uh, plant materials specifically, and spin them into fibers, then you can make fabric. And this fabric will basically can be used as clothing. Uh, in this particular instance, from a modern standpoint, this could very well be a wool uh, blanket or wool covering. Uh, right, right, technically right now it's, it's, it's actually a fleece. Um, but um, I'm going to hopefully be able to kind of show you one way to wear uh, just a blanket that will allow you to, you know, maximize uh, your, your body temperature uh, in, in a cold uh, scenario. Or even wet, because you could use plastic at that point. But, um, yeah, I mean, the concept would be to be able to make, uh, be able to make a loom. Again, that would take some research. It would take some time. Uh, it would take uh, the ability to to actually be able to weave and process enough fibers to actually make it but it's possible that's the way we started out uh, thousands of years ago uh, right now we have just a straight blanket it could be a sheet it could be a comforter it could be anything right uh, next on the primitive aspect of things I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show uh, this this uh, pullover that I made it's out of buckskin and I made this out of buckskin some years ago I do wear it uh, it's very warm even when it's really cold outside and the wind is blowing and I found a pattern that I like um, I had I think this is like but let's see this is one two three four five I think it's about six hides um, to make this and it's very thick it's very dense um, it keeps me warm uh, it cuts the wind, and uh, as you can see, for cover, I made a hat that has, um, it's kind of a ushanka, or what they call an ear flap hat, that's got a fur inside, and then there's a buckskin shell outer. The same with mittens here, or choppers as some people call them, where there's fur inside, and then there's a buckskin outer here uh, as a covering. Now. If you can't get to fibers or, or, or make, you know, get to hold to plant fibers or even wool, then you might have to uh, resort to uh, hunting and getting some 
some big game like deer or elk or moose or something like that. Again, it takes a lot of caloric output. There's some specialized skills that are required. Um, it, it's not something you're gonna be able to do quick and dirty unless you just have deer walking through your backyard and some people do have it like that. Uh, but for the vast majority of people, uh, they may not have that resource. But again, this would be synonymous, this coat, which is a primitive coat, so to speak, would be synonymous with just a regular synthetic jacket which is part of covering all right our clothing is a form of protection it's a form of, of covering and I tend to like these little kind of bomber jackets they're relatively cheap they have a lot of they they have a lot of um, insulation in them and so they're poofy and what that is what that ha happens is it traps the air between the layers between your body and the outer layer and your 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 body heats up the, the air inside of the the, between the fabric and so therefore it, that's the, 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 therefore it, it creates an insulative layer and that's how you stay warm especially with really poofy jackets down jackets etc etc many people will fall back to wearing fur coats or, or, or fur uh, leather hats or having an extra layer of skin which is what this buckskin uh, pullover would be so covering yourself from the elements is very important uh, that also goes along with shelter, you know, being able to make a shelter, uh, the debris hut, uh, a wiki up, um, a scout pit, um, you know, TP, uh, a lodge, uh, a lean to, all kinds of tarp shelters and such like that, um, in order to cut the wind or to cover yourself from rain and snow, uh, to protect yourself from insects and things like that. So cover is very important and one of the first, actually the first uh, thing you should, you should, within a survival situation, you need to be able to, um, to uh, deal with is how do you protect yourself? How do you protect your core temperature? So again, just as an example, is again, you know, this is a modern coat jacket. Uh, and then we have, you know, something kind of more r rustic or primitive. You know, heck, it could be just any old coyote that you just trapped and skinned it and wrap it around yourself for extra warmth. This is more stylized. Yeah. Okay, along those lines, we have ponchos from the modern standpoint right and again I'm not really endorsing any brands or anything but this is just something I keep in my kit which is a Cole Coleman disposable emergency poncho right this is nice you spend you know a couple of dollars on these you have one you keep one in your glove box or in your backpack and you know if you, if you start to get wet or if you want to protect yourself from biting insects and stuff like that you can put on a, a poncho you could basically do the same thing with a, a, a good thick black plastic bag or contracting bag, right? And so I have here as an example, um, just, you know, the 14 gallon trash bag, right? And most people know how to do this. Most people do do this when it's really wet outside or they, they're in a flooding situation. They know how to cut up some holes in a, in a plastic bag uh, for their, their arms and head. And it's a form of shelter. It's a form of protection. It's a sort of form of cover. Uh, here is a space blanket and again it's supposed to re reflect uh, uh, heat if you're exposed out in the sun but it also is the thing with plastic was you, if, when you cover yourself with plastic it, it retains your heat you know as you give it it radiates heat it reflects it back into you so you stay relatively warm even though this is really really kind of thin stuff right uh, and then we have um, you know and again that's just something I just pull out of my kit you know, all this is is, you know, a few of these types of bags in here, both for carrying and then also for uh, cover if I ever need it. So, again, along the lines of cover, uh, let's see what else, I'm not forgetting anything. Along the lines of cover, uh, hats. Again, I showed you the hat uh, that I made out of uh, rabbit skin and, and, and buck skin. Um, this is made of cattail hat. 
So I took a class up north where I live in Grand, at Grand Marais, where a, a, a weaving artisan used what we have as a local, our local palm tree, a local palm leaf, or resource for weaving is cattail. And this is, this is pretty durable. I mean, I've had this, what's going on, what, maybe two years now? Um, and you know, it fits and it, it's, it's gonna provide some protection from the sun, protection from insects, um, but yet it's, it's, got, it's porous enough uh, so heat can dissipate, especially in the summer, right? I could, this could be woven tighter and that it could be more protective, even warm, um, if, if I was to put this on, right? So hat wear uh, is, you know, stocking caps, you know, ski masks are a form of cover, okay? Uh, let's see here. So I've got a pair of uh, moccasins that I've made and I've worn, I've had these for many years and I wear them often when I go out and about because uh, I just like being able to feel the ground when I walk. And um, I made sure that the, the uppers here are kind of a dense buckskin. These are made of buckskin, and the uppers are uh, loose buckskin. I use a wrap to lace my leg, to, to lace them up my legs, to keep ticks out. Uh, but then what I've done from a modern standpoint is I've used liquid sole um, to cover the bottoms, both for inner city use and uh, even being on rocks out in the, the woods. Um, and all of this is is uh, a mixture. Uh, you make a, a consistency of uh, peanut butter, a mixture of um, of, sh of shredded uh, rubber and uh, barge cement. And then once this dries, you smear it on. You mask off the area that you don't want to get covered. You smear it on, and it creates this non-stick surface. It creates kind of a, a sole. Um, but these, this is a, a plain style. Uh, moccasin, uh, three-quarter top moccasin, uh, and this was something that the the Plains uh, Native Americans would wear, Comanche and uh, the Lakota, and uh, there's a hard sole on inside here. So underneath this, there is a um, there is a vegetable tan raw hide uh, or cowhide rather, and the thing about that is that it can be kind of slick. Um, so I've um, especially in the inner city so I've just covered that up uh, with uh, this liquid sole so that I can kind of wear it urban wise but mainly I only wear these when I'm really out in the in the woods and stuff and uh, they've held up pretty well um, I'm probably due to make another pair soon uh, as soon as I can get some more buckskin because I prefer to make a pair out of buckskin but you know protecting your feet is very very important uh, so this is another form of cover uh, footwear and then, uh, you know, that could be boots, you know, whatever, whatever type of boots. I don't, I'm not going to get into the specifics. I don't really endorse any, any sorts of, of kinds of, of specific um, tools and materials. You know, as long as it works, as long as it serves my purposes. Um, <clears throat> let's see, lastly, this is a relatively short video, but lastly, uh, these are a pair of mucklucks um, that I've made. Again, learned how to make these up north. And I've made plenty since then, some years ago. Probably made over 10, 15 pair by now. Um, and again, I've, I've covered the bottoms with the liquid sole. So in the inner city, I don't slip. Uh, these are really best suited for dry snow, wet and slushy uh, city snow. Not so much, they get dirty and you do your feet do become wet. Um, but I've got um, wool liners, felted liners that I've made. Um, and the wool liners uh, actually keep your feet relatively warm. They'll be wet, but they're not going to be cold or freezing. Uh, and uh, again, this is to protect your feet and to cover your feet in deep snow. The way that these puckers work is that there's no, there's no snow that can get in into the puckers here like that. So uh, again, this is kind of a relatively short um, video. And the reason why is because uh, it, it's, it's, in my mind, it's almost very, very, very self-evident, all right? And people tend to do this without thinking about it. They can be outside at any time of the year, and all of a sudden, if it rains, what are people, what do you notice people doing? They're, they're scrambling to the bus shelter. They're scrambling in so indoors. They're scrambling to their car. They're trying to seek shelter, right? 
And that's basically what the, the first C of the five C's of survival is about, is cover. So you want to cover yourself to protect yourself, uh, to protect your core temperature, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and maybe even to, to cover other things if you have firewood and stuff like that out, and you want to cover it, especially if it's inclement weather and such like that. So um, again, it, it seems kind of obvious, but I just wanted to touch on that. You know, some of the other five C's that, I, that I've gone through um, tend to be a little bit longer winded, but this tends to open up a whole wider uh, universe of, uh, uh, of different subject matter, right? So I'm just giving you some examples, and I think the most practical example is really what, you, what we do as modern human beings, uh, urban, modern city-dwelling human beings, is the first thing we do is we put on clothing, and that's to protect ourselves. Uh, and then further than that, we layer up depending on uh, what type of weather we have. So uh, next, I'm just gonna just give a, a brief tidbit on um, how to use a, a blanket uh, to as a, as a as a quick and dirty covering. You could do the same thing with a piece of a, a piece of plastic as well. And there's a whole bunch of videos out there in regards to using a wool blanket for survival or for bush bushcraft. And I, I really find that aspect fascinating because it's it's very minimalist. It's very you don't need very much you just need a blanket and you can do all these different things with it uh which kind of goes along with my philosophy of being able to really just kind of utilize what you have on hand and still be lightweight and still be mobile um so i implore you to look those check those out there's also videos on using the sh uh, shamag if i'm pronouncing that correctly and that's just basically your head wrap or a big handkerchief uh for 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 various uses like filtering water um, protecting yourself from insects, covering your head from the heat and sun uh, as a tourniquet. Uh, and so, um, you know, this, 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 these fields tend to be, these aspects tend to be very, very fascinating to me. And there's so much to cover. There's so much to practice. What I try to do is I at least try to know anywhere between, off the top of my head, three to five different variations of any one thing. You know, knots at least. <clears throat> Covering techniques with the um, with a blanket, uh, using a handkerchief uh, to cover your head, or uh, wrap things up like um, the Japanese um, art form of fudoshiki. <clears throat> so at least three to five off the top of your head, and and you know it's great that people can know an encyclopedia of all these things, <clears throat> but I think you know those that are very you know if if you, if you whittle whittle that knowledge those different knowledge bases those different items uh, or abilities within those knowledge bases down to or techniques down to you know three to five that you can have and know off the top of your head you'd be uh, well ahead of the game versus you know knowing ten thousand of them and then when you really need it you can't remember one um so uh, there's a, a, a shaolin saying that says um you know you don't you don't you don't fear uh, the warrior that knows 10,000 kicks, you know, you fear the warrior that has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So, uh, you know, if you, if you know at least one to two, at least that goes of uh, uh, heads and shoulders in, a, in an actual situation when you're under stress and duress uh, versus knowing 25 different ways of doing one thing, but then if you don't practice them all, 25 times or 25,000 times, then you won't be able to recall it when you actually need it. So um, most people can't, you know, I'm speaking generally. But again, that, that's, 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 that's where I come from with that. Um, I hope to be able to share at least my thoughts on some of those things. Most of it's regurgitated because somebody else has already did the videos on it. So I'm learning from that and I'm putting that into my toolbox or my kit, so to speak, of, of, uh, of, of a knowledge base. So um, that's the... Uh, first C of the five C's of uh, survival, which is cover. All right, to <clears throat> give a brief demo of how to use a wool blanket uh, for uh, covering, which is very important to keep away hypothermia, I've got my lovely assistant here, and she's got a, this is not wool, it's more of a fleece uh, blanket, a, a, a fleece throw, 
And so we're going to just walk through uh, one method of, of covering up. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, you just drape it over your head just like that. Yeah, now pull the sides inside, yep, cross over. And then it helps to have a sash or a length of cordage. That's a belt. I'm gonna fasten it around the waist, kind of looking like a all right, and then that's one covering. Now, what we don't have is a pin or safety pin, but where here is where you would pin it or use some uh, burdock burrs to fasten it, all right? But this would be a nice covering. So if you just hold this in place and then you go ahead and spin around, that kind of covers yourself from head to toe for the most part, right? Keeps you nice and warm. How does it feel? Warm. Warm, yeah, and it's hot inside. It's in the house, right? All right, so then if you were to just wear it as a skirt or a sarong or just a bottom wrap, you just take your bottom part off and it work just that way. Uh, and you could tuck things, the, the drapes, into your belt line like so. You can do the other side, yeah, just loosely, just like that, just tuck it in, there you go, keeps it from draping, and then you can even go to the floor and grab from the bottom hems and tuck them in. Yep, you can open it up, just tuck that in, especially when it gets hot or if the ground is muddy, so this is a, a way to use a wool blanket or a blanket as a covering, uh, quick and dirty, and uh, I uh, got this from another YouTuber. I'll put the link below so that you can reference her uh, ideas on this. But it's one that I'm kind of I'm kind of cherry picking what I like, what I think can work in a pinch, and I'm looking for easy uh, and quick. So this is one option for cover. Your your other one dropped there. Just tuck that in. Okay. Yep, and there you go. So